So back in November of last year, I wrote an article about a big upcoming opportunity in gold stocks. And I showed this chart that shows the boom and bust cycles in the gold stocks over the last 30 years. And you can see that, you know, after bear markets, you know, you experience big bull markets in gold stocks and where you can achieve, you know, very big gains. I mean, from 01 to 2008, we had a five bagger bull market in the gold stocks and um, from the 08 crash bottom until 2011, we had a three bagger bull market. So huge gains are out there in the bull markets and the gold stocks. But the problem is, is that we don't know in real time when these bear markets end. And right now we're still waiting on the end of the bear market in the gold stocks that started in 2011. And actually what I want to talk about next is how similar this bear market is, is starting to shape up compared to the bear market from 1996 until uh, the mid 2000s in the gold stocks. And for a little bit of background on that bear market, if we go look in the S&P 500, this is actually what was a big cause to the bear market in the gold stocks uh, from 1996 until 2000 and really what happened with the S&P 500 is it went into its final stages of its secular bull market in the 80s and 90s and you can see back in 1994 the S&P 500 broke out into a stage 2 advance from this nice stage 1 base and it advanced essentially for you know five and a half years all the way until the 2000 top so the S&P 500, you know, went through the, the nice uh, transitions and stage analysis from a base to an advance to a stage three top. And then, of course, the bear market that started in uh, mid, the mid 2000s and went until 2002. Um, but the key thing is that for the gold stocks, this bull market in, in stocks you know where money was flowing kind of drove the bear market in the gold stocks and we can see that next in this chart of the XAU gold stock index um, you know back in 1996 gold stocks went into a, a bear market but you know as I'm going to talk about next what's eerily similar about this bear market to the current bear market is you know the stage 4 decline in the gold stocks essentially completed for the most part over a two-year period from you know 1996 until 1998 then we had like this basing phase for about two years up until you know the early 2000s then we had like this late stage four decline like late decline in the bear market that ultimately proved to be the final bottom for the bear market in the XAU but we still had some more basing to go before gold stocks finally broke out into a new bull market in about the mid mid 2001 so this whole process took like four and a half years from you know the decline which was only about you know like i said the most most of it was over two years then you had like this long drawn out basing with a little bit of decline in 2000 that you know is really probably what wore everybody's patience thin in this bear market and you know everyone the towel was thrown in you know by the time we get down here when the when the bear market is finally over so if you look at what we're going through currently in the gold stocks uh, we made a top back in 2011 and most of the bear market just like the XAU back in 1996 most of the bear market for the gold stocks you know has probably been achieved within this two-year period from 2011 until late 2013 so most of the damage was done here but we all know about how bearish people have, have been even from here all the way until here, even though most of the damage has been done. But just like we, in 1996, we had that late uh, stage four decline that happened last year in the gold stocks, and you know which was mostly driven by the parabolic U.S. dollar. So now we're going through this basing process again, and we don't really know here where we are. Are we... You know, if you go back and look at the ZO, the XAU back in, you know, 2000, we're probably somewhere in here. I mean, we could be 
in a stage four decline still, but you know, if it, if it mirrors what happened back then, we just don't know when this is going to bottom really. So if we go back here, we just don't know when this is going to bottom. But if you look at, go back and look at what happened, I mean, as soon as it turns around and gets back into a, a nice stage one base, it was only a matter of time, another six months until we're in a new bull market again. So, you know, as, as bearish as people are down here, their, their expectations need to be reset because, you know, all of a sudden we're back in a new bull market before anyone even knows it. So, so I mean, we just need to, to wait and see what's going to happen with this bear market and be patient to, to, you know, wait for the XAU to get back above the 30 week moving average and uh, into a position where a new bull market can start. And if you, if you go back and look at what happened to some of the gold stocks back in the, during that 1996 to 2000 bear market, I mean, like real gold, uh, you know, most of its decline was in, in 1998 as well. Then it went through this monster basing phase all the way until mid 2001. And look at the gains that were achieved in real gold from mid 2001 until early 2003, like over a period of a year and a half. This stock was uh, more than a 10 bagger from somewhere in the twos all the way above 24. So this is the power of buying in early into new bull markets. And, um, you know, you can see the, the volume increase down here, too, which kind of signals that the bull market is kicking, kicking off. So, you know, this, this is the power of, of getting in early in a new bull market. But, you know, the problem that I, like I've talked about in previous videos is the fact that this whole bear market and wear out where you out stage one basing phase is what prevents people from getting into these awesome opportunities and, and th i talked about this in my last video but you know the the big trades come after stage one bases where people are not interested in, in an investment so i mean look at think about how people were probably reacting to royal gold throughout this basing phase i mean absolute disgust and and uh you know you know depression mode for people that are looking at the stock but as soon as the bull market ignites you know this is the time that monster gains are won and you, you look go back and look at pan american silver during that same time period um it didn't have as, as flat of a base as royal gold but as soon as that final decline in the gold stocks was over in late 2000 it started setting up its base and it you know from all the way back until late 2001 up until late 2003, like a two-year period, Pan American Silver went from just under three to over 13. So maybe a like a four-bagger bull market in Pan American Silver over a period of two years, which is you know monstrous gains, and um, that's the kind of stuff that you know can be achieved if you can get in early in these new bull markets and and uh, identify what's going on in the in the stage transitions and something that caught my attention today that was pretty interesting was this guy was talking about Tesla in this podcast I was listening to and he basically said that he got in early into Tesla uh, back when it broke out into its bull market in 2013 but he got in like around 40 and sold like somewhere above 60 so he made you know, like 50% on his investment, but he missed out on all these monstrous gains in Tesla over the next, uh, you know, year and a half and was kicking himself because he said he would have been a millionaire if he just would have held on to it. So another thing that people don't talk about in, in trying to capture these bull markets is how do you, you know, back when this happens, like you're not thinking about the potential of a bull market and what could you know you know what could happen to your investment i mean the the gains that happen when you get in early in these monster trains trades are tremendous and you really need to have a game plan going into when you're trying to you know get positioned early in bull markets is is to think about you know where some where some of these things can go and what you're going to do when they get to periods where they're, there's going to be big pullbacks. So like, for instance, in Tesla here, it, it goes from almost 200 down to 125. And this like scares a lot of people out 
of the investment. I mean, look at the volume here. You can see people are getting scared and selling and capturing gains, but you know, all it did was retest the 30 week moving average and then went into another advancing phase, you know, and then it did the same thing here and went into another advancing phase. So you have to be mentally prepared for pullbacks in bull markets and what you're going to do when that happens. And you know, one of your strategies might be to, you know, lighten up a little bit when you get too far extended from a 30 week moving average and then look to buy back in on a retest of the 30 week moving average. So, you know, obviously it's impossible to pull that off perfectly. I mean, because you never know when it's too far extended. I mean, it could stay extended for a long time and you, you never know when exactly to buy in down here. But, you know, if you if you try and and, you know, do partial position trading where you're, you know, selling a little bit and then buying a little bit back in. That's a good way to go about uh, trading, you know, trading around a, a position. But really to buy and hold is where you capture the, the, the big gains because if you sell, you know, when Tesla hits uh, like 150 from 25, I mean, you're talking, you know, a five bagger on your investment, but it turn in reality this thing was a ten bagger if you just held it throughout the whole thing. So if you you hold it for another year from here, you got a ten bagger on your hands. And um, so just to reiterate that final point, um, you know, early in a bull market, you know, a couple different things are working against you. The media is typically going to be bearish down here. Your own diminished expectations because you're not thinking about what could be possible in the new bull market and your inability to hold through pullbacks and fan to fail to plan for them ahead of time you know what you're going to do when you're trying to to hold and achieve you know the maximum amount of gains you can as the bull market progresses and uh thank you and have a good night